Hi everyone! Welcome, welcome to another video from me and today I'm going to share with you how I decorated this MDF blenders box. I've used paints and stencils. Here they are, these gorgeous little smoothies. You can store them on their side like this or they fit beautifully into these little holes in the top of the box. I've put a contrasting colour at underneath it but that's a personal preference. You can use whatever colours and decorate it in whatever way you like. I'll show you what I used to use. I used to use this £1.99 egg box and you can see that's how I store them. So I don't have one smoothie for every single colour, I just use 12 and so long as I keep the colour families similar this works really well for me. There are only six steps to this box. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to glue it all together. Then we're going to put a base coat of gesso on it and you can use any gesso that you like. This one's a bit thicker, this one's a thin gesso or this tinting base works really well. Now this is not an essential step but it helps to give a nice base coat so that you only need one coat of your paints. I'm using the Fresco Chalk Acrylics. I love, love, love these paints. The colour range is amazing. They dry really quickly and they work really well for this type of project on stenciling or painting or stamping. The colours that I'm using, I've used Peacoat which is for the inside to give me that lovely dark deep contrast that I had underneath this top section. I've also used cheese coat, no not cheese coat, cheesecake, Caribbean Sea and bubblegum. Why did I choose these colours? Because I just love the contrast that they give and I just love those colours. I'm using a paintbrush. I like to use these foam sponges to apply some of the paint. It gives me a nice smooth finish. I've got some stencils. The three stencils that I'm using today. Glory, Feather Leaf and White Orbs. The type of stencils that you want to use for this project will be those that give you a relatively small design. And then finally the other thing that we're going to use are some sea sponges and I'll talk you through those when we get to that point. So step one, glue the box together so as you open your packet there are instructions on the back of it as to how to glue it together. What I did first was I just glued the box and the lid. That's all for now and I'll explain why in a moment. I didn't actually say in my list of ingredients that you'll need some glue but naturally glue is required. The glue that I'm using here is Cosmic Shimmer. You can use an MDF or a normal PVA glue but I like using the Cosmic Shimmer. It dries quickly, it's pretty secure and you can clear out any smudge or smear marks quite quickly. So the first thing that I like to do when I get a project like this is pick out all the pieces sort them into order so that I make sure that I've got all the right pieces and then I do a semi-construction so that in my mind I know how it's going to all fit together. So you can see I just want to make sure that in my mind I know where all the pieces are going to go. That's my base and I'm going to glue the base and the lid together first. So we're going to start with the long pieces first, glue those in place and then glue the side pieces in.
just got our lid glued, our base glued, and you can see as the glue is drying, it dries clear. Now, you did see me as I was gluing, I used my finger to clear away the smear marks. No worries if you want to use a cloth or a baby wipe, that will work as well. So, just our box, all the other pieces we've still got separate, and you'll see why. So, the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply a coat of gesso or tinting base. Because I have this tinting base, I'm going to use it. I'm going to give it a big shake. And I've just got a piece of plastic underneath it. As I say, this step is relatively optional because you can just apply a bit more paint and that will give you a reasonable off coverage. But I do like to use this gesso. And as I said, I like to use the foam sponges. When I'm painting, even though it's a base coat, I like to keep it, I don't kind of fly about in all sorts of different directions. I like to keep it in one direction or two. <laughs> Now, where there were join marks in the MDF, you want to make sure that you cover those with a bit of the gesso. You don't want those shining through when you've done all your beautiful artwork on the top. So you can see I'm not being too careful. I am definitely not applying a thick coat. You can see I'm scraping it across so that you get a decent enough coverage which is not too thick because we don't want the MDF to swell because that will make it more difficult to put the lid on and off etc. So that's what we're going to do. You're going to do all parts of the box and the base and then we're going to paint each of these little components. So put on some lovely music, sit and watch some TV. It's a great little project to do. So you can see how I'm sm taking my sponge and I'm smudging it into the corners to make sure that I can get all into each area and cover it with my gesso. And then I'm going back over with my foam sponge to clear off any of the excess gesso. I'm also painting the edges with a thin coat, remembering thin, thin coat, because we still want this precious little box to open and close really easily. So you can see, as it dries, it's even thinner. It's okay, it's not meant to cover all the pieces, just provide a base coat. So here we are, we have our box, our top, our bottom, our insides, all gessoed. That is two of the six steps. Now the fun part comes. So I gessoed both sides of each of these internal pieces. Technically you don't need to, but it saves fluffing around at the end and you'll see why. You saw that I gessoed the edges of each of these and again you'll see why as we put the base box together. This little holy bit that sticks in the middle I only gessoed one side because honestly 
it gets glued into the box and you will never see the underside okay so that's the only part that I only glued or only gessoed one side as you saw in the video I either used my finger or the inside of my sponge to make sure that I did put some gesso into the inside of those holes. I also made sure that each of the joins was well covered and there weren't any dark pieces left. So the next step, actually the next two steps are painting the inside and as I said I used a dark colour because I think it just gives you a lovely contrast. I'm using Peacoat and again I'm applying it with a foam sponge. Because these paints are water-based you can just wash it out with soap, washing up liquid and water and it should come back to new. So to paint the inside we're just going to do this base, the bottom of the box. You can see I only put a tiny bit of paint out at a time because this paint does dry relatively quickly. I don't want it to dry out. I also don't dip my brush into the pot so that you, there's less risk of contamination that way. So I'm just going to go around and paint the box with two layers. I use a piece of acetate here for my paint palette. You can see I love keeping it. Isn't that look fun? I started a new palette just for you and we'll see what it looks like at the end with all the colours. two coats of pea coat in the inside of your box you saw that around the edges you wanted a layer of the dark color I used my finger you can use a paintbrush if that doesn't fill you with joy when I was touching the outside I had my finger from the inside of the box that way you're less likely to get bits down the side no worries if you do because we are going to sponge and stencil right over the top. Okay, so we're ready for step four, which is creating the base sponge coat on the inside and the outside of our box. For the lid, I'm sponged the inside and the top. For the base, I sponged the outside all over it, as well as the top of this smoothie holder. So remember we only gessoed one side of it, we're just going to sponge the top of it like that. That is going to sit on the side slats, the larger set of the side insert holders. So you can see these are slightly wider than these ones. The wider ones we're not going to paint or decorate because they are going to go down the sides of the box and you won't be able to see them at all. So we're going to put the larger pieces to one side we're going to sponge the top of this and we're also going to sponge these side pieces because this is what we put on top here to make the box lid sit in place. So I'm going to start with my Caribbean Sea. It's just, I love that colour, I just love it. I'm going to take my sea sponge. You can wash this out quite quickly after you've used it and use it again and again. Using my makeshift palette here I'm just going to put a tiny bit of paint. Now the trick here is to make sure that you only get a little bit of paint on this sponge. If you 
press it too hard or you get too much paint on it, it will smudge and you won't get the interest that we've got here. So just to make sure, so you can see I took my, some of my paint and dabbed it off a bit so I've got a light layer. I'm just going to use the underside so I get a feel for how this paint is going to go onto the sponge. I like that, here I go. Light tapping motion and you really can't go wrong here you're just going to tap, tap, tap all over it. So you can now see why on this top piece of the smoothie holder it was really useful to do the gesso because it gives you a white base and that's peeping through. So I am literally going to do this bouncing action on all those pieces that I just described. sponging you may well have got a bit of that turquoisey Caribbean sea paint on the top no worries we will sort that out afterwards you can just go in with a bit of pea coat and put your finger around the edge now what we're going to do is we're going to take the four larger pieces of the side panels and we're going to slot in our smoothie holder So we're going to start with the longer sides first. Do you know what? I am not going to put the longer pieces in first. I'm going to put the shorter pieces in first. <laughs> A bit of glue on there. Slot it in. Push it right down to the bottom so that it's glued firmly in. Taking a bit of glue again onto the other side and I'm just going to slot that in too. Then I'm going to take my longer pieces and I'm going to slot them in so you can see I'm putting it at an angle slotting it right down and then pushing it into place and it just clips in nice and firmly there. Again at an angle I'm just going to go around the edge here because I don't like the little bit of Caribbean Sea that I've got around the edge. And you know, I honestly prefer to use my finger because our fingers can find the tiny little grooves that the paintbrushes sometimes skip over. I'm 
only applying a tiny bit of paint. Then I'm just going to apply, not that it really needs it because it does fit in quite firmly. And this is where you'll know whether you put too much paint on it because as I said, the MDF swells. Making sure that it's sitting firmly onto that base panel that you've put in there. I'm going to clean my fingers off. Now, <clears throat> I have got a bit of a smudge there. I'm just going to go back in with my paintbrush and a bit of Caribbean Sea to touch it up. And then I'm going to take my four small pieces and I'm going to glue them into the top. Again, taking the shorter pieces and gluing them in first. And because you have painted both sides, you don't need to be worried about which one goes where. And the reason we painted both sides is because you can see a bit of the side piece pops out of the top. So there we have it, our box all ready, assembled, ready for the final piece of this. And the final piece of this is to decorate it with our three colours and our three stencils. And I apologise at the beginning when I was giving you all the colours, I missed this one which is electric violet. So this electric violet I put on last to create some extra depth with my third stencil. So I started with cheesecake and white orbs. Then I went in with this gorgeous bubblegum pink colour and I used the stencil called Glory. And then finally and carefully, because it is a very strong colour, I just added hints of electric violet with feather leaf all over the box. The only thing you need to remember is not to overload your sponge with paint, because otherwise it's going to bleed through the stencil as you sponge it all over the box. So I'm going to use cut and dry here. You want something that's a bit more solid, but ever so gently tapping it off so that you get a very thin amount of paint on the sponge and don't overwork it through the stencil. box ready for putting our gorgeous little smoothies in. I do hope you've enjoyed that. I'd love to see what you make. Please tag me so that I can congratulate you. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>